السلام عليكم بسم الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري ربي زدني علما ان النعيم اوف الله ماي لورد اوبن اب فور مي ماي تشيست اند ايز ماي تاس فور مي ماي لورد انكريس مي ان نوليدج ناو تودايز توبيك از ا فيري امبورتنت وان اتس اون ذا سبجكت اوف قبله ناو ذا ريزن واي اي ديد ذيس از بيكوز ذا تراديشنال مسلمز ذي يوزلي يوز ذيس فيرس اور ذيس توبيك تو تراي تو بروف ذات ذا بروفيت محمد عليه السلام ريسيف سام سورت اوف ا secondary revelation some revelation outside of the quran they use these verses but i'm going to show you brothers but by, by going through verse after verse after verse to try to prove to you that this cannot be the case this cannot be the case and i'm going to show you why okay now another thing that i should bring up brothers i should make myself very very clear when i make videos and i say i'm here to explain to you let's get one thing straight okay The only one who explains the Quran is Allah himself brothers. Allah is the one who explains the Quran to us and grants us the knowledge and grants us the understanding and the wisdom, okay? All I'm doing is bayyana of the verses of Allah. Allow me to elaborate on that. Now, the Quran instructs Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam chapter 16. He uh, says to him that he sent down the dhikr of the or the book to prophet muhammad alayhi salam so he could do little bayyana to the people okay little bayyana comes from the root bayyanu which simply means to 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 make plain to make clear to make evident or to make manifest or to make it known to the people now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also instructs the instructed the messengers before him to do exactly the same thing there's a verse that says wa ma arsalna mir rasulin illa bi lisan qaumihi li yubayyana lahum so the word litubayyana li yubayyana comes from the same root allah azza wa jalla also instructed those given the scripture before saying to them you must make it latubayyanu nahu it comes from the same root ba ya nun to make clear to make known to make evident it is allah who explains it we just simply try to make it clear and known to the people okay i hope i've, I've cleared that up for you Now, traditionally when Muslims use the word qibla, now if you go anywhere in the Muslim world, even if you don't speak the language, if you go up to a brother and said, "Excuse, uh, akhi, qibla." If you say qibla to him, he'll straight away point you in the direction. He'll say, "Ah, qibla, qibla." They'll say, "This is the direction of prayer towards Al-Masjid Al-Haram, towards in Mecca to pray." This is what they traditionally this is how it's usually understood, okay? But I'm going to show you so many verses to try to Let's see if it really means a direction of prayer, okay? Because we have to do justice to the text brothers. We can't just pluck words out of the Quran and give them different definitions, okay? We'll get started. Now, before I get into the top, uh, topic of qibla, one thing I want I want to make mention of here. Chapter 2 verse 23. Let's this is in the same chapter where the word qibla appears, okay? This is not coincidence that Allah says this in the same chapter. In verse 23, look what it reads. And if you are in doubt about what we have sent down upon our servant, okay, nazdalna ala abdina, send down upon our servant, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam, then produce a surah the like thereof. It says, bi suratin min mithlihi. Now the word mithlihi comes from the root mim va la, which means equivalent or likeness, okay? Allah is saying, bring a surah like it. Now think about this. If something happens, Other than the Quran was inspired or sent down a pro- Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah, what would Allah say bring a surah like it? Think about it. let that sink in for one moment. Why couldn't Allah just say something like bring a bring something shay in like it, or bring a wahyun a wahi like it? it? Doesn't say that. It says bring a surah like it. Now, isn't the Quran uh, surahs? Isn't it filled with surahs? Yes. Now. Can a traditional Muslim, honestly, can they bring his hadith literature? Let's just say, for example, bring Sahih al-Bukhari and say, these are surahs. Can you honestly say that? Think about it. But look what it says. Bring a surah like it. Now, if you really reflect upon this, this goes to show that the only thing that came down to Prophet Muhammad was surahs. In other words, the Quran. Now, I've actually made another video, which, brothers, I can't stress this enough. Please watch that video. It gives you a crystal clear video. picture as to what was revealed to prophet muhammad alayhi salam the video is how was the quran revealed now i look into that and, and i and i prove without a doubt verse upon verse upon verse that the only thing of wahi that was inspired and sent down upon P- prophet muhammad alayhi salam was the quran and i prove with numerous verses i highly recommend you watch that video however there is another thing which i'll, I'll touch upon that video as well now 
How, now, how do we define wahi? Think about this. Now, there's a verse in, in uh, chapter 42, verse 51. It reads, um, It is not for a bashar, li basharin, a bashar, a human being, but Allah should speak to him. Now, the words are, you kallimahullahu. Allah speaks, he shares words, he gives words. Okay? Speech. Allah, uh, Allah speaks. He does not speak to a bashar, illa except through wahyan. Now, the word wahyan is there, okay? Uh, now, I covered this in quite detail in, in that, in that uh, video. Now, so this just goes to show that wahi is a form of Allah's speech, is it not? This is Allah speaking, giving words to his servants. This is what wahi is, when you really think about this, okay? However, I show in that video also that Prophet Muhammad, Allah also communicated non-verbally. Now, underline that word there. He communicated non-verbally also with the Prophet through, um, through uh, dreams, manami, and through visions, ar-ru'ya. And I touch upon that on, on that video. Please refer to that video. And it gives you a clear understanding there. Okay, we're moving on, inshallah. Okay, now the first verse in uh, which the word Qibla appears is in verse 142 in Surah Al-Baqarah. Let's, let's read what it reads together, okay? The foolish among the people will say, what has turned them away from their qibla, qibla tahimu, okay, their qibla, which they used to face. Now here, notice it says face. However, in the Arabic, it doesn't say face, brothers. Let's be honest, okay. It says, say, to Allah belongs the east and the west. He guides you in what's to a straight path. Now let's pause here for a moment. From this verse, we can tell two things. There's two, there's two points from here we can learn from this. Number one. There was a change in the, in the Qibla. Whatever the Qibla is, there was a change in it, okay? Secondly, it tells us here that to Allah belongs the east and the west. Now think about this for one moment. If Qibla is about direction of prayer and it's so, so, so important, why will Allah make the Prophet say this? To Allah belongs the east and the west. Al-Mashriq wal-Maghrib in Arabic. Now, if direction of prayer is so important, why would Allah say this? Think about this for one moment, okay? Now, I'm going go to I'm gonna go through these words one by one, okay? See where it says, Al-Lati, the word al you could go to a website called corpus.quran.com. I highly recommend you go to that website. It gives you word-for-word -word definitions, what they mean, okay? It's, I highly recommend it. Now, here it says, al which translates to which, Kanu, they were used to. Aleha. Now, from the context, it says which they were used to be on. They used to be on it. They were on. They could which they were on. It doesn't say face, brothers. Okay, see how they try to inject these words to say it means face. It says the Qibla which they used to be on. So there was some change of the Qibla here. Okay, now we'll continue. The word Qibla, let's look at the root word definition from the triliteral three letters. Okay. Kaf ba lam. Interesting. Look what it says here. To accept, admit, receive, agree, meet anyone, to face, encounter someone or something, advance, approach, correspond, counteract, compare, require, compensate, accept with approval, show favor. Now here's my question, brothers. Now this is according to Lane's dictionary. There are many dictionaries out there. There's Lane's dictionary. There's Hans Dictionary, there's uh, Lisan Al-Arab, there are many dictionaries available, okay? Now, from this definition here, from these words here, is there any indication from, from the, from the uh, transliteral root, is there any indication here that this means a direction of prayer? Think about this, brothers. You can pause the video and have a good look at that. Now, I want to sort of give you an analogy to, to try to explain to you what this means, okay? Imagine we are in a meeting at your workplace. We're in a meeting, okay? Let's just say you've got 10 people in the meeting. Think about this. What do you usually do in a meeting, brothers and sisters? What do you do? Think about it. In a meeting, we do what? We talk. We exchange ideas. We discuss issues and matters that are going on in the workplace, etc. Now think. Let's, let's look through this together. Think about this. To accept. Now in a meeting, someone said something. You say, you know, I accept that. Admit. You admit you did something in a meeting. Receive, you, you received a piece of information. Agree. Someone in the meeting is just like, Peter said something. You know what, Peter? I, I, um, I, I agree. Meet anyone. In the meeting, they may have introduced a new person. 
Good morning, everyone. This is John. He's going to be joining us today. To face, encounter someone or something. Think about this. If Peter is talking and is saying something, wouldn't we all turn our face towards him and, and face him when he's talking? Brothers, am I getting you thinking? Am I getting you thinking? Advance, approach, correspond, counteract, think. Someone in the meeting said something and I'm like, I, I didn't like that. I counteract. I don't like that idea. Compare. You said something, somebody else said something, you're comparing ideas. Require or compensate. Now somebody lost something and you're compensating for him. Accept with approval. Someone say something, you say, you know what, I approve of that. Show favor. Someone say something, I favor that opinion. Brothers, do you see what I'm getting at here? The word qibla, from the definition of the root, of the root, this simply sort of gives the impression that this is some sort of a gathering place. This is some sort of a meeting spot or a meeting location, a gathering spot. Doesn't that make sense when you really reflect upon it? Now, I'm going to continue. I'm going to show you more and more verses, okay? Let's have a look. Now, I'm going to come back to that verse which I just quoted about what has turned them away from their qibla, okay? And it says, uh, to Allah belongs the east and the west. He guides me with to a straight path. Now, there's enough. Now, I don't want to, um, no, I'm going to go verse by verse, but I want to draw your attention to another verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. It's not a coincidence, brothers. Have a think a bit about this. At verse 177, in the same chapter, look what Allah says here. Righteousness, which is al-bir, al-bir, this righteousness, is not. It says it's not. That you turn your faces to wallu wujuhakum, your faces. You turn your faces. Now here it says qibla. The word qibla appears here. Qibla, the east or the west. Think about that for one moment. Now I understand that in Arabic to try to translate Arabic into another language it loses much of its meaning. And that's totally understandable. And I understand why they put the word towards here to refer to Qibla. But it doesn't really mean a direction, brothers. Because here it's clearly saying righteousness is not Laysa. It's not. But you turn your faces Qibla, the east and the west. See here it says um, to Allah belongs the east and the west. al mashriku wal-Maghrib. It says the same thing. al mashriku wal-Maghrib. So righteousness is not about turning your face towards um, the east and the west, but righteous, and it tells you in the verse, righteousness is the one is about the one who believes in Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, and the, and the prophets, and gives wealth in, in despite its love for it to the relatives, the orphans, the needy, the traveler, those who ask for help, and for freeing the slaves, establishing salah, and giving the zakah, and fulfilling the promise with a promise, etc., etc. So. This tells me, without a doubt, that Qibla is not about direction, brothers. Otherwise, why would Allah say this? Righteousness is not about turning your faces to the east and the west. Think about that, brothers. So Qibla must mean something else, like the definition I just gave you before. Okay? Again, I hope, inshallah, I'm getting you, I'm, I'm getting you thinking. Again, brothers, I'm not trying to force my opinion onto you, brothers. Okay? What I'm simply doing is making clear making beginner of the verses. This is our role, okay? This is our job, to make clear the verses to the people, okay? Because Allah instructed Ben Israel, you must make it clear, which means do not conceal or hide it. Now, unfortunately, traditional Muslims, they don't give you the whole verses. I'm going to get to that shortly, okay? Now, let's go to the next verse. Okay, this is the verse in which the traditional Muslim tries to for you to believe that Prophet Muhammad received another wahi, some some additional secondary wahi. Okay, have a look. Let's see what it says here. At verse 143, this is continued from, from 142. Okay. And thus we have made. Now pay attention to this word here. Ja'alnakum. Ja'alna. Pay attention to that. You a median, a just community that you will be a witness over the people, and the messenger will be a witness over you. And we did not make, again, Ja'alna is used there. Okay, pay attention. The Qibla, Al-Qiblata, which you used to face. Now, again, it says face here. It doesn't say face, brothers. Okay, let's be honest here. It says, al which, Kunta, you, singular pronoun, you, Alayha, you used to be on. Okay? Except that we might make evident those who follow the messenger from those who turn back on his heels. And indeed, it is difficult except those who Allah has guided. 
And never will Allah cause you to lose your faith. And here it says, previous prayers, brackets. Indeed, Allah is to the people kind and merciful. Now, now I'm going to uh, do something different today, okay? I've drawn a little diagram here. I want you to think about this, brothers. Now, there's a cloud here. Let's just say this cloud represents wahi. And there's wahi coming down. And I've drew a line there connecting to the prophet or the messenger. Prophet messenger, okay? So this wahi is coming down to the prophet. Now, according to this verse here, what the traditional Muslims say is, the prophet Muhammad, السلام, through this outside, this secondary wahi, which they, they usually call the sunnah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I hope you guys can see that. And I've, I've written second wahi here, okay? Through the sunnah, Allah allegedly sent down the secondary wahi, telling the messenger to face the direction of Al-Aqsa, al Al-Masjid al Al-Aqsa. Al okay, according to this verse, this is what they say. And I hope you guys can see that. Okay, so they say, see, this proves the, Pro uh, the Prophet Muhammad was given a secondary uh, revelation. But I'm going to show you that this is impossible. I'm going to show you shortly, okay? Please bear with me. Okay, now let's, let's continue. Remember that word ja'anna, we, we made. Allah says we made. What does this word made mean? Does it mean that Allah has sent down revelation? Does, is that what it means? Think about this. The word ja'anna, I'm going to show you there's other verses which uses the same word. Have a look at this, brothers. At chapter 2, verse 128, look what it reads here. This is a supplication, which I think Ibrahim and Ismail made, okay? O oh Lord, make us. Now, see the word here, waja'anna, the same word, make us, Muslims in submission to you and from our descendants, Muslim nation, to you, and show us our rights of worship and accept our repentance, etc. See the word ja'anna, make us. Is there any indication here that it says that Allah sent down wahi? Or, or, or does it say, our Lord, send down wahi for us? Does it say anything like that? No. Look at this verse here. Chapter 6, verse 114. And thus we have made ja'anna. See the same word is used here. Ja'anna. For every prophet and enemy. Think about that promise. Devils from among mankind and jinn, inspiring one another with decorative speech in delusion. Listen to this, brothers. But if your Lord had willed, walau rabbuka, if Allah willed, they would not have done it. Think about this, brothers. If it was Allah's will, these 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 enemy enemies among the, the uh, among the men and jinn, they would not be able to do this. They would not be able to do this. So this tells us something, doesn't it? Allah's ja'alna is simply the opposite. Of Allah's will, is it not? Think about it. Because if Allah willed, they wouldn't be able to do this. So Ja'anna simply means, if we break this down, it simply means that Allah allowed for this to happen. Allah let it happen, or He, he allowed it to transpass. He let it be. Do you understand what I'm saying, brothers? Allah simply allowed for this to happen. This has got nothing to do with Allah sending down Wahi, brothers. It's got nothing to do with this. Okay, I'm going to prove this further. Here's another verse. Chapter 10, verse 85. So they said, another supplication, Upon Allah do we rely. Our Lord, make us. Taja'anna. Say ja'anna, the same word. Not a try for the wrongdoing people. So in this supplication, are they saying, Oh Lord, send down revelation so we don't become a trial for the disbelievers, for the wrongdoing people. Is that what it means? Brothers, ja'anna has got nothing to do with Allah sending down wahi. Don't let the traditional Muslims fool you, bro. Don't let them fool you. That's not what it means. It simply means Allah allowed. He let it happen. He allowed it to transpass. Okay? Now, moving on. Uh, here's another verse. Uh, chapter 25, verse 74. And those who say, Our Lord, grant us from among our wives and offspring comfort to our eyes and make us. Waja'anna a leader to the righteous. See? Allow us. Make us. Okay? See, it doesn't mean, oh Lord, send down revelation. It's got nothing to do with revelation, brothers. Okay, moving on. Now, continued from, uh, from verse 243, okay? Now, at verse 144, pay attention, brothers. Think about this. Now, so far, so far, from the verses I've just shown you, the traditional Muslims want you to believe that through this secondary wahi called the sunnah, okay? Allah sent down a wahi, a revelation outside of the Quran, Telling the Prophet to face for his prayers, for his prayers, 
Al Masjid Al Aqsa, which is in Jerusalem. Okay, think about this. Okay, and the Prophet, according to them, the Prophet did this for some time. Okay, now look at this first here. This is the next verse continued. Okay, at verse 144. Look what it reads. This is so interesting. We have certainly seen the turning of your face towards the heaven. Pause it for one moment. Taqalluba wajhika. We could see your face turning to the heaven, to Fisama. Why did the Prophet do this? Why did he do this? Think about this, brothers. Now, when a person is troubled by, by something, don't, don't we sort of turn to the heavens? Don't we raise our hands? Think about this, brothers. When we trouble, when we're seeking guidance, we're seeking help, don't we turn to the heavens? Say, my Lord, help me. Help me. The Prophet Muhammad, السلام, obviously was troubled by something, brothers. That's why he turned his face to the heavens. Think about that, brother. Let that sink in for a moment, brothers. Now look what it says here. And we will surely turn you to a Qibla. Qibla, with that which you will be pleased. Think about that. Qiblatan tardoha. The word tardoha means pleased or happy. Let's go back over here. Let's go back over here. Okay. They're saying that initially Allah ordained for the Prophet to follow Al Masjid Al Aqsa for his prayers. Right? That, that's what they usually say. So he did this for some time according to tradition, to traditions. But here it's saying, verily we can see your face turning to the heavens, and we're, we're going to face you to a qibla in which you'll be pleased. So if you put two and two together, do you know what this tells us? That the previous Qibla, this one here, the Prophet was displeased with it. <laughs> Think about that. The Prophet was not happy about this. So Allah, he, so he turns to the heavens to say, my Lord, help me with this. And Allah says, I'm going to now face you to a Qibla in which you'll be in pleased. So was the Prophet Muhammad, was he displeased with this Qibla? Does that make any sense, Prophets? So he was displeased, he was unsatisfied, he was not happy with this Qibla, which Allah allegedly revealed to him. Think about that, bro. That makes absolutely no sense. So, so and, and another thing, so Allah changed his mind, did he? He changed his mind, saying, okay, now face, send it down a Quranic verse to him, say, okay, now face al-Masjid al-Haram. Really? Does Allah change his mind, brothers? Think about that. I know... Oh, they tell all sorts of stories about how, oh, how, how Allah so loved Prophet Muhammad Ali Salam, but you know, for him he changed the clip just to please him. Brothers, this is nonsense. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay. Is there any evidence? Is, is there even a shred of evidence anywhere in the Quran that Allah changes his mind, brothers? Think about that, brothers. Allah does not change his mind, brothers. He does not change his mind. The Quran says. Uh, there are no change to the words of Allah. The Quran also says, Inna Allaha la yukhliful mi'ad. Verily, in, in, uh, Allah does not break His promise. Now think about this, brothers. What is a promise? A promise is Allah's spoken words, is it not? Allah's words in revelation. He does not break His promise. He does not break these words. Another verse in the Quran says, La mu'aqqiba li hukmihi. Hukmi here comes from the root Hakafmi, which means to command or to give judgment. Allah does not change his command or his judgment. Another, another verse in the Quran says, uh, Think about that. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Allah does not change his sunnah. Sunnah is, is the established practice. And I will say he does not break this. He does not change this. Another verse in the Quran reads, When Allah decrees a matter, He says, Kun fayakun. When Allah makes a decision about something, He says, Kun fayakun. Be and it is. Is there any indication whatsoever Allah changes His mind, brothers? No. That is false, brothers. So this tells us, straight off the bat, that never happened. Brothers, make no mistake about it. That never happened. It never happened. The Prophet Muhammad السلام, simply chose a qibla, a meeting point for himself. So where he could preach the Quran to people, he could call people to Islam. 
This was some sort of gathering, a, a, a gathering place where he gathered the believers together and they engaged together. He taught them the scripture. They spoke about their everyday affairs. Do you understand what I'm saying here, brother? Qibla cannot mean direction of prayer, brothers. It can't. Does that make, I hope uh, that makes sense. Okay, now look at this now. We'll continue. So turn your face towards, now look, Fawali, so turn, Wajhaka, your face, Shatra, look at that. Let's break this down. Fawali, so turn, Wajhaka, your face, Shatra, the word Shatra appears here. So turn your face, Shatra al Masjid al Haram, and wherever you believe, so turn your faces towards it. For Walu, so turn, Wujur Hakum, Shatra. See the word Shatra. Now, if Qibla meant direction of prayer, why didn't Allah Sallam put the word uh, Qibla there? He doesn't. It simply says, turn your faces, Shatra, in the, uh, in the direction of Al Masjid al Haram. Because the word Shatra in Arabic comes from the root Shin Ta Ra, and it means the following. To part in two, to divide into halves, the direction of or towards, the direction of or towards. So the word shatra means direction or towards, brothers, not qibla. Do you see what I'm getting at? Not qibla. Subhanallah. See the verses how Allah breaks, breaks it and explains in detail his ayat? Think about that, brothers. Shatra means direction. Now, of course, there's, there's, another, there's another question here. Now, whether we take this literally or metaphorically is up to you, brothers. I'm simply providing the verses to you. You need to do your own homework, brothers, to really think about this. You need to do your own homework. Whether this means literally turn your face towards it, or this could have like a metaphorical uh, meaning as well. But this could sort of mean wherever you are, no matter where you go in the world, turn yourself towards Shatra and Masjid al Haram. And like, this is sort of, when you break this down, it means wherever you are in the world, um, be mindful of Al-Masjid Al-Haram, wherever you are. Now, what is Al-Masjid Al-Haram? Now, this is a sacred place, is it not? It's a place of gathering where people get together. There's peace, there's tranquility. People are engaging and talking. They're worshipping together. They're sacrificing together. They're striving in the path of Allah. So be mindful of Allah wherever you are in the world. Okay, there's also that metaphorical meaning to it as well. Now it's up to you whether you take this literally or metaphorical, brothers. We need to, you need to do your own homework. Okay, moving on. Okay, in the verse we're given the scripture, Jews and Christians, it says, uh, they well know that it is the truth from their Lord and Allah is not unaware of what they do. Okay, moving on. Let's go to the next verse after this. Okay, chapter 145. And if you brought those who were given the scripture, الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ Every sign... We are not going to follow your qibla. Tabi'u qiblataka. Nor will you be a follower of their qibla. Now look at this, brothers. Be tabi'in qiblatakum. No matter what sign you bring them, they will not follow your qibla. And nor will you follow their qibla. Think, let's go back here, brothers. Think about this. According to tradition, didn't Allah send down this secondary wahid telling the Prophet to face Al-Aqsa, Masjid Al-Aqsa? which is the same direction as the Jews, right? The same direction. They pray in that direction as well, towards Jerusalem, right? But but here it says, you will not follow their Qibla. But here, according to tradition, I thought he did follow their Qibla for some time. Do you see what I mean, brothers? Do you see what I'm getting at here? This never happened. It makes no sense, brothers. See, look what it says here. Nor would they be followers of, of, of each other's Qibla. So if you were to follow the desires after what has come to you of knowledge, Indeed, you would, uh, you would be among the wrongdoers. Think about that. Qibla cannot possibly mean a direction of prayer, brothers. It makes absolutely no sense. Another, now, the verse continues. Those to whom we gave the scripture know him, the Prophet Muhammad, as they know their own sons. But indeed, a party of them conceal the truth. Well, they know the truth is from your Lord, so never be among the doubters. Okay, the verse continues. Now, at verse 148, for each religious following is a prayer, when they inject the word prayer, the direction towards which it faces. So race to all that is good. Wherever you may be, Allah will bring forth for you for your judgment altogether. Indeed, Allah is over all things competent. Okay, just breaking down these words here. 
ولكل فو ايفري وان ويتش هاتون الدايركشن هو هي ماسكن سينجل برانيون مول مول سوري مول لي ها تيرنز تووردز سو فور ايتش بيرسون دي هاف ا دايركشن تو ويتش ويتش دي جو تووردز اوكي ويت ريد ذا ان يور اون تايم بروفرز اجين ذا فيرست كونتينيوس اكسكيوز مي فيرست 149 سو الله عز وجل ريد ات رايت اجين وات وات سيد ايرلي اون سو فروم وير في جو ويل سيز فور برايير يا تيرن يور فيس تووردز فور ولي سو تيرن وجه هكا يور فيس شاطرا سي دوز اس ا قبل سيز شاطرا المسجد الحرام and indeed it is the truth from your lord and allah is not un unaware what you do next verse at verse 150 and from wherever you go out turn your face towards for when you turn watch how your face shatra not qibla shatra al masjid al haram and wherever you believe is may be turn your faces towards it for when you wujuhakum shatra in order that the people will not have any argument against you except for those who commit wrong so fear them not but fear me And it is so, so I may complete my favor upon you, and that you may be uh, guided. Okay, so brothers, this just because your qibla cannot possibly mean a direction of prayer, brothers. From the verses, this this gives a sort of impression that a qibla is like a like a gathering spot, some sort of a meeting location. It can't be about direction because remember the verses before, Allah says in verse one seventy seven, like righteousness is not that you turn your faces, you know. To the east or the west, it's not about that. Righteousness is about believing Allah in in the books and spending and doing righteousness. It's not about direction, brothers. Okay, now here's another verse which really drew my attention. Chapter ten, verse eighty-seven. Think about this, brothers. And we inspire to Moses and his brother settle your people in the, in Egypt in houses, buyuta houses or your homes. And make your houses. Now it says facing though. It doesn't say facing your brothers. Make your houses qibla. Buyutakum your houses qibla, and establish prayer. Wa aqimu salata and give good tolerance to the believers. Think about that, brothers. If qibla means direction of prayer, well, what does that mean here? What does that mean here? Think about this. Now let's break this down. Buyutakum translates to your houses. Look what it says here. Qiblatan. This time they've translated as as places of worship. So rather than saying a direction of prayer, now they put places of worship. So they're on the they're sort of on the uh, right boat where place it's some sort of gathering point, some sort of location, right? Okay. Now just just a recap what we just spoke about. How traditional Muslims say to us that the Prophet Muhammad Allah was given this secondary wahi, where Allah allegedly told him to face al-masjid al-aqsa right and then the prophet and the believers did this for some time and then a quranic verse came down allegedly which which is supposed to sort of abrogate this saying now face that direction brothers allah does not change his mind please get that for your mind allah does not change his sunnah nor does he break his promise nor does he break his word nor does he break his command this this does this does not exist brothers This is just traditions. This is just traditions trying to make you think that there's some revelation outside of the Quran. Again, please watch that video uh, about how was the Quran revealed, and I prove, brothers, without a shadow of a doubt, that the only thing of Wahi that came down upon Prophet Muhammad and was inspired to him was the Quran. But Allah did also communicate with the Prophet non-verbally. Listen. Non-verbally in the form of dreams, manami, and visions, arruya. Okay, and I'll touch up on that on that video. So again, to conclude, qibla cannot possibly mean a direction of prayer, brothers. It can't mean that because then the verses that won't make sense when you put them all together. Okay, I hope I've, I've I've made this clear. Now, until next time, brothers, keep in, keep reflecting and pondering. Take care. Salam alaikum.